Hey everybody! We are so excited to be back for this second day of Cooking with Moms. Oh my gosh! Yesterday was so much fun and today is going to be great as yeah. well. I'm excited. So yesterday, if you didn't no, get a chance no, to we... see it, we... Log on. Hmm? Log on. Log on. Let us know in the oh, well, comments yeah. that you're here. Let us know in the comments that you're here. Log we always on. forget to yeah, ask we this. do. And the other thing we always forget to ask is please tell us in the comments where it is that you are watching from. We love to um, uh, see that. We love to see. We have people from New Zealand and, and South Africa and, and all over the place. Hi, Sue. Good to see you. Pahuska, Oklahoma. We have folks from all over yesterday, Texas to California, all around. So it's so much fun to see where people are. So please, as you come on, say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Roger. Uh, great to have you here with us. So, Lexi's on, Lori. Thanks for. Oh, we've got a couple Canadians. Canadians on. The Canadians are taking over right yeah, now. Yeah, let's see if we get fun. get some uh, U.S. folks. Yep, somebody here. from Lincoln and Alabama. There we go. So hey, we're rolling. So that's, that's uh, pretty exciting. That's fun. So if you d recognize the the mantle, we are at our home in Crete, Nebraska. And we decided this year that we were going to not host a big Thanksgiving meal like we typically do every year for our extended family. But because of COVID-19, we're going to be staying home by ourselves. We're cook we are going to be cooking a whole Thanksgiving meal and dropping off some meals to some people in our community. But um, one of the things that we didn't want to miss out on was just celebrating some of our family traditions. So... Um, all this week, we're doing these live videos to showcase some of our family traditions when it comes to the food that we make for some Thanksgiving. Some of our very favorite recipes. Yeah. So yesterday, my mom, Carol, came on and she showed us out how to make her deviled eggs. And tomorrow, we're going to have my stepmom show us um, a favorite chocolate pie recipe that's been in our family. But today, I'll let Steve introduce today's guest because it's his mom. So today, we have my mom with us, Gail, and she is going to make a frozen salad recipe that was actually my great-grandmother's recipe. My great-grandmother, we called her Mardu. So this is Mardu's frozen salad prepared by my mom, Gail. And so without further ado like to introduce you to my mom, Gail. Here she is. Hi, Gail. Hi. So Gail is in her home kitchen in Shenandoah, Iowa. She and John split their time between uh, Iowa and the Florida Keys. And so we're really happy to have them back this way right now. Usually they would have flown south already mm -hmm. uh but this year's a little different so we're happy that you're just a couple hours drive away from us so welcome gail thank you so much for doing this oh you're very welcome i'm glad to do it and jo john is there too right yeah, my is, dad is he gonna john. show himself is he gonna yeah. john, say, hi. And say hi i just want to get this over so i can eat the salad <laughs> <laughs> It's a favorite of the family, so this is... I didn't get to eat any eggs yesterday, so... <laughs> I will, if y'all watched yesterday, Aunt Mom Carol made deviled eggs, and my dad loves her deviled eggs, so... Yeah, and Steve actually drove to Lincoln to pick a few up from the driveway. Yeah. So <laughs> he already had his share, but... Anyway, we're excited to have John and Gail with us today. And Gail, why don't you tell us a little bit about this salad. I know it's been a really um, a family tradition for you guys, but tell us a little bit about how you learned about it and, and a little bit of history behind this recipe. I think the first time I came to Shenandoah, uh, when John and I were engaged, his grandmother made this salad that she served at lunch the day that we had lunch at her house with her. Um, and then it turns out that everybody in the extended family always said, holiday time when she'd say what can I bring they say bring your salad bring your frozen salad so she did and it is something that we all make my mother-in-law Steve's grandmother also made it but she's a very um, determined person in following recipes for example the first time she made stuffing for the turkey the recipe said to cut the bread in quarter inch cubes so she got out a ruler and put next to her bread, so she cut it in quarter-inch cubes. Well, she's very precise, my grandmother. Yes. Wow, I'm nothing like her. The other thing that she did, she didn't have any string to tie the turkey up, 
So she used safety pins. Whatever works. Whatever works. But for this salad, um, because the original recipe was before there were mini marshmallows, she it, the recipe says to cut marshmallows into small cubes. And she never, ever used mini marshmallows. She always cut them. Even her mother, Steve's great-grandmother, said, just use the little ones, yeah. Kathleen. Yeah. It would be so much easier. But wow. she never did. So. Excellent. So what are some of the ingredients that, that we have in this salad? You start with um, two bricks of cream cheese that have been softened to room temperature. And you beat those up. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. You just get those all kind of whipped together. And if it's soft, it doesn't take very long at all. So to, soften your, so to soften your cheese, did you just set it on the counter? And how long before yeah, you're ready to prepare? Set it on the counter for a couple, three hours. However, if it's warm in your house, it won't take as long. It's winter here. It takes a little longer. Okay. To which we add then a quarter of a cup of, of either Miracle Whip or Spin Blend. But our family likes Spin Blend, so that's what I'm using. Okay. Do you have the Spin Blend bottle? Can you show people this, what this is? Because we can't always get this in our grocery store here. No. I have been known in Florida to order it from Amazon. Okay. okay so Splin Blend. Spin Blend. It's, yeah. blend. it's made by, um, what does not say? Silver Palette. Silver Palette. So, yeah. Silver Palette Kitchens makes it. And so if you had to pick and use Miracle Whip or mayonnaise, if you don't have Splin Blend, which one? I would say Miracle because you want just that little bit of extra tang that you get from the salad dressing. Okay. Got it. You don't get from the um, real mayonnaise. And the other ingredient that you add about this point is a, the one of the small cans of pineapple, crushed pineapple. Okay. And you drain that, right? Yes, fully good. It needs to be drained. And so generally I get that out and let it drain for hmm, quite a while before I do it. Probably 45 minutes to an hour or so. You just put that in a strainer and just let it sit sort of over the strainer. Strainer over a bowl. You can use the, the juice for something else. Okay. And just mix that in. Just a minute. It was a little bit more off the beater. There you go. Okay, then just just until it sort of combined, really. Then my eight ounces of mini marshmallows. So you're not going to cut the big ones. I'm not cutting the big ones. <laughs> I've been grateful that there have been, and those you just mix in. And I use a spatula to do that. Okay. And Gail, do you is this usually a Thanksgiving treat, or do you make this for other holidays or celebrations? What are some other good uses for this salad? Anytime we can talk her into it. <laughs> um, I have I have served this at club meetings, and when I've done that, because. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit fancier. I added about three quarters of a cup of chopped pecans. If you like nuts, you could certainly add that. Okay. I prefer it with that. Marshmallows are in the last ingredient. It's really simple, people. Is a, is a cup of cream whipped. But you could also use eight ounces of Cool Whip if you don't want to use whipped cream. Okay. But the good stuff is always, you know, good. And that's it. And tell us how you did your whipped cream. Right. No, how did you do it? Tell us how oh, you I just whipped that. up the cream. I put a cup in a bowl and a cup of uh, and I had stiff peaks. So a cup of whipping cream? Uh-huh. And then you just did that with your hand mixer or by hand or how'd you do it? I, well, I don't whip it by hand. I do whip it with my hand mixer. Okay. Got it. 
And you just kind of fold that into into this, and then you're done. You might tell them Paul's John story. <laughs> yeah, of course. John's, grandmother, John's grandmother used this also as sometimes a dessert to serve to club meetings or whatever. She had her bridge club in one day, and Steve's brother and his cousin were in and out of the house, and she said that was fine. They had been out in the park and came in and said they were hungry. And she said, well, you can help yourself to anything you find in the fridge because she was playing bridge. They ate the whole salad, those two boys. And so she came out to serve her ladies and there was nothing. So she made them run to the nearest grocery store and get ice cream and said, you have five minutes. <laughs> and they I made it back. That. All right, so now what are you doing? I'm putting this in the, in the dish that I'm gonna put in the freezer. Okay. And that's like a like a Rubbermaid? This is a Rubbermaid. You could use a, a glass pan. I wouldn't use metal because of the fruit. Okay. That's, that sometimes tends to make things taste off. Yeah. Okay. And then you kind of just smooth it out? It around. Do I get that over on? Yes. Here, John. <laughs> She spilled my luck out. <laughs> that I, I, I how's, how's it that taste? taste? How's it taste? Good. Good. Uh, it tastes better when it's cold. Yeah. So then you freeze it. I make this sometimes three or four days ahead of the holiday. Okay. And I would think this would keep up to a month in the freezer but it could be starting to crystallize by the end of that time. So if you were planning to keep it that long, you might want to put some plastic wrap over the top. So it stays wow. a little less air. Okay. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I think this is such a good um, salad for a holiday celebration when you have a lot of other dishes that you might be making. This is, you know, quick and easy, and you can do it ahead of time, and then just put that in the freezer, and it's ready to go on and, that day. And the day of, you don't need to worry about any oven space. And then you can cut yeah. whatever size servings you want. Um, I would, this would make at least 16, I think, of, of a decent size serving, because you've got so much other food that you really don't want a big piece of anything. But right. it's really refreshing compared to some of the heavier foods. Right. So with this dish, then you're going to just put a lid over the top and put it right. in your freezer. Right. Now, Lori just asked if you've ever used the multicolored fruit mini marshmallows, and I'll say we have not. But now, what do you think of that? You could. Now, I think, I think oh, they could use almost anything you wanted. This recipe has always been just the crushed pineapple, um, and I think you could do anything to add to it. <clears throat> Serving it, I have usually put it on lettuce, bib lettuce if I can get it because it's pretty. Mm -hmm. But um, I've also used spinach leaves because of the darker green, especially at Christmas. Yeah. Okay. And then I know you told us um, you, you could also, if you wanted to, you know, you could cut it in pieces and put it on a tray or on individual plates. Yeah. And I liked your idea if you do the spinach to also put some. Um, cranberry you know, seeds on if you wanted. Either way, you could put a few on a particular individual plate, or if you have a serving platter, you could just sprinkle some around on the platter to make it prettier. Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked, how come you freeze it? How come you freeze it? Yeah. I guess that was because it was made ahead and it could be frozen. It's easier to serve when it's a little bit stiffer from the freezer. It okay. Gets if, you froze froze before, quickly. if you were going to serve this then on Thanksgiving on Thursday, how far in advance would you take it out of the freezer before your meal? Um, I would take it out probably about an hour before. And if I have room in the fridge, I might just put it in the fridge till then. Okay. Okay. That sounds I good. I read this as a half recipe also, but John wanted more. He's, uh, he knows what he likes. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Gail, are, are there any Thanksgiving traditions or memories that you have of Thanksgivings when you were a child? I grew up in Minnesota <clears throat> and um, we always had dinner late in the afternoon. And the big thing was that there was usually ice we could skate on Thanksgiving. And the mothers were really happy to have us all go skate while they finished up Thanksgiving dinner. The kids were out of the house. They came back hungry and tired and they ate and went to bed. You know, it was really kind of nice. Yes. Yeah. I love that. What about you, John? How, what were Thanksgivings like when you were growing up? Um, we had a lot of family here and we would all get together somewhere and, and uh, eat together. And my grandparents on my father's side lived in Webster City, Iowa, and some years we'd go up there for it. And then when, our, when Steve was little, we went to Yankton, South Dakota, where his grandparents were, and uh, hung out up there and watched the river flow. Yep. Some years, oh, yeah. years they sledded up the dam, and some years we didn't wear jackets. It was always kind of interesting weather in Yankton. Yeah. And, and Gail and John, you know, you guys have been in Shenandoah for many, many years. And John, you... I grew up in that house. That was the kitchen I was in growing up. So yeah. And it's you, been redone uh, since then, but... Um, but what I was going to say is Shenandoah has a rich history with home kitchens and home cooks. Do you yes. want to tell us a little bit about what originated there? And John, do you want to come on come the on camera? Come on the camera up to do it. Yeah. So it's not just a voice from above. <laughs> <laughs> Two radio stations in the 20s. I'm going to get a, grab this chair. And <laughs> Henry Fields and Earl Mays radio stations open in, uh, the, in the 20s. And they had to fill all that air time. And among them were ladies that would go on the air and give recipes and chit chat with the families. And at one time, there was a show called Kitchen Clatter. And it was the longest continuously broadcast show on, on AM radio. And it, it was, Until it stopped. It was syndicated in like 20 or 30 stations. Oh, wow. And, wow. Uh, so we were so around here several years before. ago and mentioned Shenandoah. Little old ladies would come out and say, hi, do you know Kitchen Clatter? And yes, we did because they lived right across the street from us so, when I grew up. <clears throat> uh -huh. and, a lot of live radio at that time. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my grandma always having kitchen clatter cookbooks. Yes. And, and loving, um, I remember one recipe was called Beverly's Brownies that was one of my favorites. Okay. Well, they had a whole bunch. That's but a rich history there in Shenandoah. That's oh, yes, yeah. it was. It was. And Everly Brothers started here for those of that age that would know the Everly Brothers and Bye Bye Love and Wake Up Little Susie and all that sort of thing. We're, we're preserving their house now in, in this historical society. They moved it to a, a central location. So it's a big deal. Yeah. So do well, you we're getting several comments from people who remember Kitchen Clatter as <laughs> growing up. Well, tell them they need to look at their 1973 August edition for your brother on the cover. <laughs> I was in there too, but I was buried. You were in the, side, you were in the magazine, yes. Uh, kitchen, then you, they might remember, if they were, are looking for the kitchen clatter products, that's now called Extra Touch. Yes, they have great they want them, they, and they're not in their grocery, they can write Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. uh, extra Touch in Shenandoah on uh, Airport Road. Yes. And uh, I'm sure that they will be happy to send them to them. Yep. Yes. So besides the Mardu's frozen salad, do each of you have one or two favorite Thanksgiving dishes that you usually like on your plate? Scalloped corn. <laughs> Scalloped corn, creamed onions, uh, dressing, dealt with the turkey. <laughs> Mashed potatoes and gravy. Mashed potatoes and gravy. We need the turkey for the gravy in a yeah. bag. It's the carbs. We like the carbs, right? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> And not to mention a couple of kinds of pies. So, no. Yes, standard no. meal. No. Luckily for us, a standard meal. Yeah, scallop corn is a, a recipe. We were thinking about doing this project. I was thinking of what recipes to do. 
scallop corn came to mind, but it, there's too much time with baking, and it, it just this is I think was a better one for this. But maybe next year we can do scallop corn. Christmas. We'll we'll have several sessions. One is when it goes in the oven, oven and then one that comes back out. Right. Yeah. John's so what would you guys be doing? And she always bakes it for about three or four hours. That's good though. Got rid of most of the liquid, but it was it was crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. And you had to scrape it off the bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the best part. Exactly. Exactly. So how will you be spending your Thanksgiving day on Thursday? Cooking. <laughs> what's what's on the menu? Well, we'll have turkey. Mashed potatoes and gravy, of course, frozen salad. I'm going to do green beans with, um, I have, I've been doing grocery pickup and I ordered slivered almonds, but they gave me shaved almonds. So I'm going to mess around with that and see if I can't make that work. Touch yeah, touch. it's going to be a little bit trickier. That'll be good. That'll be great. And uh, oh, we've got a cherry pie that Ann and Steve brought from the Village Pie Maker. So... Sometimes I may I might make pumpkin pie because I've got John's grandmother Tiga's recipe for that. Oh, that'd be nice. But I don't know. We don't need two pies. That's for sure. The two of us. So <laughs> we can always them. save the frozen one for later. That's true. Okay. That's, that's the other thing. John's mom always made the um, pumpkin pie filling a day or two ahead of time, and it was just in the fridge. So then the morning of either Thanksgiving or Christmas, whichever. Um, she would bake it that morning, so it was always freshly baked. And it's always better the day it's baked, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that way it was freshly baked, but again, some of that make ahead, get ready, be prepared early. And of course, but, the wonderful smell in the house while it was baking. Yeah. Do you have any, fa fa any favorite Thanksgiving recipe, Thanksgiving memories about Stephen? Uh -oh. I don't know. Something came up on John's computer. Oh, oh I think that's just I cousin. Think, it's yeah. cousin Kim. Kim. Kim said it that. <laughs> no, this is Adobe Flash Player, so oh, I don't understand. Oh, we're fine. Oh, oh, remind, uh, any, I can't. By the way, everybody who's watching this in the comments, <laughs> Gosh. This technology. Can you go up to the top left? There's a red button. Can you do that? No, no it's, it's got a spinning wheel. There, there we go. Yeah. All right. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to technology. They they have, I, I got to tell you, they did a good job getting this set up and figuring out where to put the, you know, we did not go over their house. We've not been inside there. They did this all on their own. And I'm telling you, they did a good really job. job. And Kim, don't job. worry, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Kim said she's sorry. No, no worries, Kim. So what are talking about? Do you have any any favorite Thanksgiving memories of, of Steve as a little boy? Oh, Steve was always the best help. He was a very agreeable about running errands or, or running and getting something or um, just being generally helpful. He still is. Yes. We did. He did well on that all by himself. <laughs> come by it naturally. And with, at Christmas, when his grandmother would come from South Dakota here, while we had other relatives still living, um, she did quite a lot of stuff at another house. And Steve was her. He he was her gopher. I Go like for that. this, Steve. Go for that. And. She told us, I get Steve, you don't. I was very clear about that. <laughs> and he's, he's, and he's, he's seen a life doing that. I think that's one of, the, one of the most difficult things about the pandemic for him has been not being able to run to Walmart every day, you know, three times a day. I'm sure right. it's been difficult for him, but he can carry stuff in and out of the car for you, so. Or for you both. Yes. And, and he actually that. went to Lincoln twice today. Once for a Slams Club pickup and once for a, one at Walmart. We couldn't get the time to coordinate. <laughs> and there was too long between. I had to go to the got to get home. I remember yeah. coming home one horrible. My dad woke us up early, early in the morning. 6.30 And said, something. the snow is coming. 
go home or you're stuck here. And it took us six hours to get home from South Dakota, and it's only three and a half on a good day. Steve so. was very quiet for us that day. I do remember he and his brother did not fight in the back of the car. Well, we were too busy being terrified for our lives, as I recall. Yes, it was a pretty terrifying trip, actually. When we got to Shenandoah, I tried to turn into the car wash to get the car somewhat cleaned off, and there was so much snow under the tires that I couldn't make the turn. Mm. Wow. We just packed in terribly, so it was a bad day. Anyway, Steve was quiet. That that I remember because <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be awful, and it wasn't. So, Gail, um, I know you made the somebody asked about which salad this was the um, frozen. It's a frozen pineapple cream cheese salad. We are going to have that recipe. We're going to post. Um, a blog post that will have a printable recipe for the salad. We're going to post that now. In the comments here, I need okay. to. One, hang on one side. I'm clicking around to care about the post here. You can either just go right to postcardguard.com. John, can you move your volume down on your just a little bit? I'm not sure. what? Getting a little bit of feedback all of a sudden. Not sure why. Anyway, we have to link. Where's Waldo? <laughs> I don't know. Is the iPad or something else on? What? No, I did. Don't worry about it. Never mind. We're good. So we just posted um, the salad recipe. There's a printable version on our website today, or you can just go on over to Postcard Jar. Dot com and you'll see it right at the top of our website. We got that already for you guys before we did this live broadcast. So you can all have that and print that out and make that for your Thanksgiving dinner uh, this week, right? That's right. So, awesome. so we want to just say thank you so much to John and Gail for doing this and being with us and getting it all set up and sharing this recipe. Um, of course, we're sad that we can't be with you this year. Um, it was great to have you here last year, but to just be able to celebrate a family tradition like this has been really nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we can, we, we'll get together via some platform or other on Thanksgiving Day. Exactly. So it'll work out. It'll work out. It'll be great. So, and, we'll all, and, and we'll all be safe and healthy, and that's absolutely the most important thing. Yeah, Gail mm -hmm. began her career as a nurse, so she's got lots of uh, experience at the hospitals. Certainly doesn't want to go back or see any of her family back. John <laughs> said to me just the other day, he said, I'm really glad you're not still working. Yeah. It's really tough. Yeah, you know, our daughter's a nurse. We think about Megan all the time, but we also think about Steve's brother, who's a physician, and we can't see him. We haven't seen him since last December. We won't see him till after vaccine. And that's because there's no guarantee for him ever that that's the way it's and that sadness the way it's gotta be and for all of us. Yeah. And there you are with in twenty miles of, of Carol and it ain't gonna work and yeah, not too bad, but we'll be around next year for it then and this is a much better. Well that's deal. the important thing, at least we plan to be anyway. That's right. So I hope wherever you are in the world watching this. So wear a mask, wash your hands. Do all the right things. Distant. We are so glad that we are safe and healthy in Shenandoah. So that we hopefully have many more Thanksgivings that we can celebrate together in person. But for this year, we are thankful and grateful that we have this opportunity to learn a little bit more about this family tradition and this recipe. So thank you so Technology much. makes it very much. We see each other and feel closer. So yes. that's a nice thing. Yeah. 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 And my telephone. Excellent. And don't forget tomorrow we are going to be here again at four o'clock Central Standard Time. We're going to have my stepmom, Jana Hart. She's going to be doing a chocolate pie recipe that is my favorite Thanksgiving dessert. And so I hope you'll tune in for that as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're just, it's been really a nice week. Thank you all so much for joining us and for all your nice, sweet comments. We hope that wherever you are, that you are staying safe, that you are healthy, 
and that we can all do our part to stop the spread and slow the spread of COVID-19 so that we can all celebrate many other holidays together. So yes. anyway, have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. you too. Also. Here's tomorrow. Thanks again, right. Johnny. Thank Gale. you. Bye. 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 I'm off to the freezer. <laughs>